Okay, so in this video, I'm going to just show you how to get, uh, how to download Anki and get it installed and sign up for an Anki web account. So the first step is to go to ankisrs.net. And unless they've changed the design since uh, making this video, there should be a big blue download button right in the middle. Click on that and it'll bring you down the page and show you your options for different operating systems. You can get Anki for Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, they do have it for uh, smartphones, so you can get it for an iPhone or Android, which is really nice. I highly recommend this if you like Anki. Um, it's worth it just for this class, but also it, you might end up using it in other classes. And it's really great if you're stuck in a waiting room or just have nothing else to do and you can pull out your smartphone. You can uh, practice um, your, your flashcards from there. And you'd be amazed at how much you can practice in a day just getting it in here and there when it's very convenient on your phone. Um, all but one of these versions of Anki are free. Uh, you can also use Anki through just through a browser, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. Uh, the one version that isn't free, unfortunately, is the iPhone app, and that actually costs a whopping $25. So if, you know, if you're not sure that you're going to use it outside of this class, you probably want to try it as one of the other versions first and see if it's something that you really like, and then you might consider uh, spending the money for the, for the iPhone version. Um, but anyway, go ahead and click on the download link for your operating system. I'm going to go ahead and show you the Windows uh, install, but it's a pretty straightforward install. So hopefully if you're running a different operating system, you can figure that out. And go ahead and open it up. And of course, Windows is going to ask you if you want to allow the app to make changes to your device. And you can click yes. Then it's going to want to know what the installation folder, the default installation is probably fine. You can click install, uh, click OK. And it'll take a few minutes to install. Okay, so when it's done, go ahead and close the in, in the installer, and uh, and then you should have either a, a shortcut on your desktop where you can get to it through the start menu. Go ahead and start up Anki, and it's gonna the first time you start up ask you what language, presumably English, and yes, we're sure we want it in English. So click yes to that as well. And this is the main Anki interface. So uh, the way Anki works is your flashcards are arranged into what are called decks of cards. And it'll show you all of your decks here. Right now we don't have any, so it just puts what's called the default deck in there. And we'll add uh, a deck in a moment. Uh, but before we do that, the first thing you should do is, you know, we've downloaded Anki, but we haven't actually signed up for an Anki web account. And the advantage, you don't have to do, to do that, but you do for this class. And the advantage of doing that is that uh, it synchronizes all of your data, all of your flashcards and the information about how, how well you know those cards and how you're using them. It synchronizes that with the Anki web server, which means you can then access it from a web browser uh, and you can also sync to other devices. So you can keep all of the information about your flashcards in multiple places on a tablet and on your desktop. So let's go ahead back over to the Anki website, scroll up to the top, and in the upper right corner, it says Anki Web. So click on that and uh, go ahead and click on the sign up button. And you'll need to give it your email address and you do need to use a, a, a good email uh, that works because it's going to um, ask you to verify your email within the first seven days or it'll stop uh, working. So go ahead and put my email in there and the password and click sign up. And it'll give you a bunch of information, terms and conditions. You can scroll down to the bottom and say I've read the terms and conditions, click continue. And you now have an Anki web account. So make sure to keep that, uh, remember the email address you used and, and, and the password you signed up with. Um, so as you can see, it shows you your decks here as well. And you can also practice with them online through the browser uh, just by coming onto ankiweb.net and, uh, and, and clicking on one of the decks. Right now there's nothing in it. So if I click on this, it won't do us any good. Um, but the next step we're gonna do is come back over to the, to the app that we installed, the Anki app and we are going to uh, log into our account over here. And the way that you do that is you come over to this little uh, round synchronize button and you click that. And what that normally does is uh, uploads any information that you've 
got on your machine to the Anki web server and it downloads any information that's different from the Anki web server, synchronizes them. Um, in this case, we are going to uh, click it. It's, this is how we're gonna actually tell it, uh, this is you know, to use the account that we signed up with. So the uh, ID that it's asking for, that'll be the email address that you used to sign up. and the password that you had. And once you click okay, now you are, uh, now you are gonna synchronize, you're, you're linked to the Anki web account. So anytime you hit synchronize here, it will, uh, it will actually synchronize with your online account, which is great for, like I said, having everything the same on all your devices, also great for backing up uh, your data so that if something happens, you don't lose your progress in here. Okay, so now that we're all set up, the next thing we need to do is import uh, a deck into Anki. And um, there's a number of different ways you can do that. You can go online and you can get what are called shared decks off the Anki website, which are decks that other people have created. Uh, some decks are great, other decks are terrible. So that's a bit hit and miss. Um, but of course, for this class, I've created decks for you. You can also make your own decks and I'll leave it up to you if you wanna look into how to make your own cards. This is a great program. It's uh, a little bit tricky to use at first. It is kind of counterintuitive in terms of actually making the cards, how that works. Uh, but the reason for that is largely that there's so many features and so much you can do with it uh, that it, it, at first it seems to not make much sense. But once you get the hang of it, uh, it's actually incredibly powerful. Uh, but we're actually going to just uh, import a file. Uh, so I will post uh, decks for you, decks of cards for you on um, online on the class website. And uh, you can just download those. I've downloaded one to my desktop. It's sitting over here. The decks, uh, the files for them end in APKG. So you'll download one of these APKG files uh, from the class. And uh, to bring it into your, to Anki, you just have to click import file and browse to it. So for me, it's on my desktop. So it's this one, research methods, chapter one. Oh, actually this one right here, Research Methods Chapter 1. And I'm going to open that. And there it is. It's imported it. Now, one thing uh, that I want to show you here is that uh, the way I set this up, in, in Anki you can have uh, decks nested inside of other decks. It's just a way of hierarchically organizing your cards. So I have said that I'm going to have a main Research Methods deck and inside that, the file that I just imported was the chapter one uh, cards. So as I give you more uh, cards for this, they'll all end up under the research methods deck. Uh, the reason why that matters is because when you practice with Anki, you can either click on this, click on the research methods, in which case it will have you practice with all of your cards that are within that, which includes, which will include chapter one, chapter two, it'll include all the chapters, or you can click directly on an individual chapter and practice just with that chapter by itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually go into, uh, it does, in this case, it doesn't matter if I click chapter one or research methods, or the main research methods one, because I only have the one thing. Uh, but let's go into the deck by clicking on it. And uh, it'll tell you how many new cards you have for the day, how many, uh, how many you're currently in the process of learning and how many you have uh, to review things that you that you have not that you saw previously, like the day before. In this case, we 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 are everything is new. Um, so we'll go ahead and click study now, and it's just like flashcards in the sense that it's going to show you one side of the card, and it's your job to try to guess or remember uh, or figure out what is on the other side of the card. So in this case, it says this is from chapter one, uh, a way of knowing that people use in order to cling to their beliefs. Uh, that sounds like uh, the method of tenacity. So you have to try to think of the answer, then you click the show answer button, or you can usually just hit the enter key, and it will show you the answer. In this case, I was right, but let's suppose I wasn't. Well, you are able to tell Anki how well you remembered it. You can say, I didn't remember it well at all, so I wanna see it again. In which case, in this case, it, it's, it's uh, you. You know, it's saying, hey, this is a new card and you didn't really know it, so we're gonna show it to you again very soon. So it's gonna show it to us again in less than a minute. If I said, ah, I was pretty good with that, it's gonna show it to us in less than 10 minutes. If I say it was easy, then it's gonna show it to me in four days. So I'm gonna say again, so I see it again in less than a minute, and then it'll go on to the next card. 
um, a tendency to cling to a belief even when new information shows the belief is not true. I'm going to say, I have no idea what that is. Uh, and say, show answer. Oh, it's belief perseverance. So I'm going to say, okay, show that one to me again. Uh, a way of knowing in which information is accepted as true because it feels right. Uh, that's, that's the method of intuition. I feel confident in that. A method of intuition now is easy for me, so I'm going to click the easy button. It won't show it to me again for four days. And so the idea is you can see um, with this spaced repetition, it is basing on how confident you were that you were, how easily you remembered it. It's going to show it to you for, you know, again, in a longer or shorter period of time. And as you get to know these cards really well, it'll eventually start spacing the intervals out over days, weeks, months, and even years. Uh, the idea being that you have to review things once in a while or you're going to forget them. But if you review them over, uh, you know, increasingly long periods of time, those pieces of information become increasingly permanent until eventually you're just really not going to forget any of this stuff. Now, one of the issues with this is that this is really designed to help you learn things over an extended period of time. This is how the how we learn things best if we want to permanently retain them and be able to use them in our lives. Um, but you might have noticed that this the way we set up our semesters in a college class, it's not designed for that. You cram everything into three and a half months. And that's really not actually the best way to design things for, for really retaining the information. Um, so we will have to sometimes tell Anki, uh, you know, it will t be trying to give us the cards a little more slowly than we might like them. And we might have to tell Anki to give us the cards a little faster if we want to, if we want to really make sure to know them for the upcoming test. It's just an unfortunate thing about having things only be a semester in length. Okay, so I've skipped ahead a little bit here uh, until I, you know, I had answered all the questions on all the cards um, for the day. And eventually it'll say, okay, you've practiced enough for the day today. And I'll say, congratulations, you've finished this deck for now. Um, like I was saying, if you have a test coming up and you'd like to see the cards again, well, you're going to have to tell it to show those to you. And there's a number of different ways you can do that. Um, one option is to click the unbury button. What buried cards are, buried cards are cards that are, it, Anki judges are related to what you just reviewed. So if a card is very closely related to something that it just showed you, it may wait to show you that card until tomorrow. So for example, if it is showing you sometimes the front of the card and having you guess the back, but another way it could do it is show you the back and ask you to guess the front. Well, it tends to not do those in the same day. But if you want to just cram in, uh, extra practice in there, there's nothing wrong with telling it to unbury some of those cards. You can also come into the custom study button here. And when you come into custom study, you've got a number of different options. The main ones, and you can experiment with or look up all these options in the Yankee uh, manual. But the main ones that you're going to want to use are this top one where it says increase today's new card limit. And you can come down here and tell it how many cards you'd like it to increase it by and then click OK and it will give you additional new cards. So I think its default is to show you 20 new cards a day. If you get through all those 20 cards and you want to keep practicing, you can come in here and tell it to give you some more new cards. You can also change to this, which is to increase the review card limit. This is the number of cards that you've already seen, you know, yesterday or the day before that it's going to show you again to review them and you can tell it, oh, I would like to review more cards because, you know, you have a test coming up or something like that. Okay, so uh, the last thing that I want to show you is, oh, uh, real quick, I should mention, before we used the synchronize button to, um, to get logged into our Anki Web account, but now we want to hit synchronize to back up the, pro the progress that we made on our cards. It's very important when you finish studying, you should hit the synchronize button. What that does, if we come back over to the Anki web webpage over here, we can see uh, if we refresh this, now, yeah, now it has the deck that we were practicing with. It has been uploaded here. Um, we could go in here and we could practice with it online here as well. It's going to say that we've actually already practiced with it for now. But if we practiced with it here um, and then synchronize the app, it would it would download the progress that we made. Uh, so this is not only a backup, but it's also another place that you can practice with the cards. Okay, so uh, the last thing I wanna show you uh, with this for now is that uh, there's this little statistics 
uh, thing that you can that you can look in. It's a little confusing. You have to. It, it'll show it to you for whatever deck you were most recently in, or if you go into the deck and then click it, it'll show it to you for that deck. So you do have to be careful about which deck you have selected. But once you know you're in the deck that you want to see the statistics for, you can click the statistics button, and it brings up different things about your progress, about how you've been practicing. Uh, a lot of this is not stuff you need to look into, but I think the most useful sort of straightforward thing it shows you is down here at the bottom. It, tell, it gives you a little pie chart with, um, it, tells you, uh, it tells you the total number of cards in the deck, which at the moment is 32, um, and, it, uh, and it shows you your status on them. So at the moment, there are none we haven't seen. Uh, so we, we, we've seen all the cards, except for some that were maybe related to what we practice with, these suspended and buried cards. Um, buried, I mentioned, is when it says, okay, this card is related to something you've already done, it'll bury it. What that means is it'll come back up automatically on another day. Um, suspended means that you've intentionally, and this is a feature in one of the menus in Anki, you can tell it, uh, suspend this card or that card, so I, don't, I just don't want to see them for now. And you have to actually go back in and manually unsuspend them. So uh, in this case, we haven't suspended anything, so these are all just buried cards, uh, which means this, this whole yellow segment is something that it'll show us on another day. For the class, what I'd like you to do um, is you'll, there'll be a series of Anki assignments. Um, basically, the idea is to get practiced as much as possible with these cards before one of the tests and send me a, a picture of this, a screenshot of this, so that I can see how well you're doing with your practicing. So to do that, uh, just take a, you know, come in here to the statistics, take a screenshot of this, upload it, send it to me. Um, occasionally, I will ask for more than just a screenshot. I will ask you to actually send in your deck so that I can really check your progress. Um, and to do that, you would go out of here, close this, and go back to decks by clicking on that. And, uh, and to send me your deck, you would click on the little drop down next to the deck and click on the export button. And then this will allow you to, you wanna make sure it says include scheduling information. You wanna make sure that's checked. You hit export. I would like you to put your name in front of it. And you can just save it to your desktop, upload it to Blackboard. So hopefully that gives you um, an initial understanding of how to get Anki going and, uh, and use it. Um, I know that it can seem a little confusing or disorienting at first, uh, but if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask me. And uh, once you get into it and have been using it for a little while, it should start to feel very familiar to you.